Hi, Hairbrain. Hi, everyone. Gerard Scarpacey here, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community and Craft Hairdresser, coming to you live from the Wella Studio in Calabasas with one of my most important mentors. I say it all the time. I wouldn't be where I am today in my career if it wasn't for this man, Mr. Stephen Moody, uh, one of the best presenters, best educators, learned all the tricks of the trade from him over the years, and it's such an honor and a pleasure to have, uh, have this platform for him to share his craft with you. It's called Triple Craft, and we're going to talk a lot about that. He's going to talk about the cut. He's working with Victoria uh, Thurman Hall, who's working on the color. Uh, and Stephen's going to school you guys on a lot of incredible things. So without further ado, Mr. Stephen Moody. Yeah, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gerard. Thank you, Kelly. And thank you, everybody at Hairbrain, for tuning in on Facebook tonight. I'm super excited to be sharing with you over the next sort of hour or so. And we're going to do a really cool transformation. Triple Craft is all about bringing together cut, color, finish in the form of a transformation. And underneath here is my beautiful, beautiful model, Alisa, from Russia with Love. <laughs> and uh, we're going to show you some looks of how she's looked before we started coloring her hair, cutting her hair. But before we go any further, I'm going to get right into doing my haircut. Um, as you can see, I've done a little bit of pre-cutting already. Her hair was down to her elbows when we got started. And I'm kind of going for a kind of medium length um, through here, but very, very heavily layered and very textured. And I'm going to be cutting the inside in the layers here, quite short and textured and layered. And um, most importantly, I'm going to give her a really, really solid fringe, a really heavy bang. So quite a European, Parisian, long inner eyes type of bang which I think is really cool and on trend at the moment. So without any further ado I would like to get right into doing this. So I'm starting on top of the head and I'm starting with a section right the way through from front to back and um, I'm taking that to the ceiling. Let me just turn around so you can get that against the white background Kelly. And um, I'm going to go from slightly shorter into longer through here. So I do keep a little bit of length in her front. Stephen, question. Uh, how do you decide the length here for the guideline that you're creating? Um, I'm deciding this length, this guideline here, purely by cutting it, letting it go, letting it fall, moving the hair around and taking a look. So purely visual at this point. It's so not connecting moment, to anything else. Yeah, I don't have a guideline at the moment. What I'm really looking to do is a little bit of a kind of a skinhead, sort of 1970s haircut that's a little bit long on the edges, but shorter and more layered on the interior. Um, so yeah, a little bit more sort of um, shaggy and... Um, Chelsea and or Chelsea. Moosh. Yeah, I think Moosh we used to use that moosh term a lot, didn't we? There you go. So again, sort of pulling to the ceiling here and shorter through to longer. And at some point, Gerard, I'm going to do a dead stop here. So what that means is I'm literally going to have a shorter interior shape with a longer sort of, as you said, Chelsea length on the outside. Stephen, let me welcome. We have a lot of viewers just joining us. Hi, guys. Welcome to HB Live. It's a pleasure tonight to have one of my most important mentors in my career, the person who really got me into the world of education, Mr. Stephen Moody. Um, he's sharing his technique uh, and his kind of whole concept for education called Triple Craft, and we'll get to talk about what that means momentarily. Uh, but right now he's starting off on his cut. I'd love to take your questions. And I have a question for you right away from um, Nancy Falconer. She's wondering why cut dry instead of wet. Great question. Hi, Nancy, and thanks for joining us. And a great question. Ordinarily, I don't cut dry hair. I cut hair wet and I kind of work it towards dry, and then I blow dry the hair, and then I kind of refine it towards the end. But in this kind of format, where we're working live, Facebook Live, um, really the excitement is very much with cutting hair. So I've taken the luxury of drying her hair first, um, and cutting it dry. I could go in both directions, to be honest. So I'm gonna jump over here and run right into her fringe. So right through the front, I'm taking one section here and just letting that rest on my scissors through here and cutting quite a heavy, bold sort of fringe 
to there. And I'm going to go fairly wide here, Gerard, which I kind of really like. So this is really something very of the moment, this kind of deep, open, kind of heavy, heavy fringe, yeah, would you say? Yeah, I think it is. And I also think it's, it suits a lot of women because basically what I'm going to do here, in fact, right through here, Gerard, I'm going to pop her cheekbones. So I'm going to really widen this fringe here. So we've got quite a, um, a graphic kind of fringe here that just opens her cheekbone area up. And some of you have seen me do this before on Triple Craft or on Cut Craft. I'm going to do a little trick here, and if you guys blink at home, you're going to miss this. So watch very carefully here how my scissors sneak underneath the long hair. Kathy Zeka is wondering if you're using your comb like a guide. I am, Kathy. Well done. Good observation. So I'm kind of pa my scissors are parallel to the actual. Um, the, the, the haircut, my scissors, yeah, for sure. And Mitty Hartley is wondering about the color. Good news, we've got Victoria here. She's going to talk about the color. She's even going to demonstrate a little bit of how she applied it. So if you guys are interested in this beautiful color, and it is a major transformation that happened here, we're going to get to see some before pictures, the quality of the hair, and then talk about the process to get it to this level. And is that a big part of your whole uh, triple craft, the combination of cut and color and styling, Stephen? Well, Gerard, at the moment, as we know, we're kind of living in an industry that's very, very color dominated. And I think that's great. Um, I think we're also dominated in a length that's kind of elbows and up or elbows and longer in some instances. And um, I think to one degree or other, that, that length and that concept is kind of um, starting to fade away in favor of a little bit more crafted hair. And most importantly of all, what we really believe at Weller is we want to really bring together the craft of coloring hair, the craft of cutting hair, and the craft of styling hair all together. So they all kind of speak to each other. And one of the main reasons we want to do that is it's, it's on trend and it's a great movement. But I think the other reason, Gerard, it makes financial sense. Because as we know, you know, with um, a lot of the colors that have been going on recently, in the last sort of four or five years, and um, a lot of the haircuts that are kind of center partings and elbow, elbow lengths, people are cutting their own hair. Yeah. Um, people are coming to get a trim once every 12 months. And very grown out colors that they can go very They're long. Grown out yep. colors that, that are painting their own, their own colors on their own hair. And uh, what we've got to be careful of, I think, is an industry that we don't really sort of shoot ourselves in the foot. So that, I think this is a great opportunity to introduce a really amazing, amazing colorist. Um, she's located here at the Weller Studio in Calabasas. Um, she travels all over the world and delivers amazing color education. Please welcome um, Victoria Thurman Wall. Hi everybody, uh, I, for me, when it comes to working with Steven, we have to work together big time to make sure that we have the communication piece of combining the three different crafts. So when Steven said that he wanted to do Elise's hair, I said, how much are you cutting off for my color? And his answer was a lot. So I said, okay, fine, she's, she's good to roll. And so um, I'll be talking about the hair color. I actually have a video if um, afterwards you want to go check it out. VTH underscore master colorist on Instagram. And um, I did a strand test on her hair. I used a one to one ratio with blonde or multi blonde powder and just 10 volume for 10 minutes. And you'll see the video in just a few minutes yourself. Um, we're going to show it. But her hair started becoming bubble gum immediately so that said Stephen this is how much you have to cut because otherwise I won't be able to color it and I think that's you know whether you work in a salon and you do your own cuts and colors or you have the great luxury that I have of working alongside an amazing colorist um, I think it's super super important that we really think about what's the integrity of the hair and what can the hair do and where is the hair gonna look um, it's best and that's really not a color conversation it's not a cutting conversation 
it's not a styling conversation. It's really kind of a trifecta of all of them. And obviously, layer on top of that, who is the person? You know, who is this person that's sitting in the chair? What's her lifestyle? You know, what is it that she's interested in? Does she spend 10 minutes on her hair every day? Or does she spend four hours, you know, on her hair every day? So I think that this whole conversation is a melding together, if you will, of, um, you know, of lots of different things. So, Stephen, obviously you've moved into the layering here. Could you kind of break down a little bit what's happening technically? Yeah, what I'm doing layering-wise here, I'm cutting triangular layers. So what that means is, as I'm going over her head, I'm really pushing away from her chin. And um, the angle that I'm cutting through here is kind of rounding over this way, and then it's going into longer um, towards the front. And um, what that does, Gerard, it really sort of maintains this corner right through here. It's important that I keep this sort of corner in the front that we're going to kind of style around a little bit later. So a triangular outline with triangular layers? Yeah, exactly. So my, 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 um, my outline shape is based on a triangular line or triangular bob. Um, it's shorter at the back and it is longer at the front. And that's mirrored, as you just pointed out, Gerard, it's mirrored by these um, triangular layers. Now here I'm really pushing away from here. It's important when I'm cutting these layers that I'm really quite expressive with my over direction. And that maintains this front corner here. If I don't do that, I can cut a lot of the weight and length away there. And again, Stephen, you know, how do you establish the length for the guideline here? Because obviously too, la too many layers and not enough layers can really disrupt a shape like this. So how did you choose that guideline? Well, it started down here, Gerard. It started with my existing length, which I've already graduated. I already elevated that. And I'm picking that piece up and bringing it up and over. And uh, to be quite honest with you, I'm not sure I'll push this too far into the middle or I'll push it too far away from her chin. And it'll be a bit too heavy because I can always go back and pick it up again. But you can't put it back on. But I can't. I haven't figured out yet how to put it back on. So extensions is the only way to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So lots of our, our friends are watching. Ariana Marino, uh, Wayne Woodruff was here. Uh, let's see, Brandon Da Silva, Antonio Quinteri. Hey, how you doing, man? Uh, it's great to have you guys here. Again, I'm super excited and proud to be here at the Wella Studio in Calabasas with one of my mentors, Mr. Stephen Moody, uh, was the first person that brought me into the world of education and encouraged me to become a teacher. And uh, as I always say, it's why I am where I am today. So a lot that you guys can learn about presentation skills, being an incredible hairdresser, and just really being an epitome of of a craft hairdresser, Mr. Stephen Moody. He's joined today by Victoria Thurman Hall, who did this beautiful color, and she's got some color tips. And Stephen, just let us know when you want Victoria to jump in, and we're gonna show you guys some of the color placement uh, that was done here on, on Alice. Alisa. Alisa. I think now's a great time, actually, while I'm yeah. finishing off these layers. And before I get to um, the fringe on the other side, I think now will be a great time. We've got an absolute killer before video and a killer uh, <laughs> during video yeah, that will uh, it'll really shock you guys so please pay attention to this don't don't tune out well it, it started off with a conversation from the standpoint i knew we were going to be having a heavy fringe i knew we were going to have longer pieces and i knew the back was going to be extremely layered so my technique if you guys follow me on over here really started with that conversation so i've got a doll prepared that is the pre-cut to what Stephen and I did similarly. I have a pie section here that I knew would be falling into that fringe area. Elisa's hair is very, very fine. And when it comes to coloring, the first thing I did was that strand test. I knew I couldn't cut the hair any way until that hair was off of it. So coloring hair for Stephen to cut, like just let me tell you, is really hard to make it look beautiful as he cuts it off. I'm over here doing, oh my gosh. But anyways, it's gone now. Um, when it comes to the technique, I actually started in the heavy areas because I knew eventually that this area needed to be soft. 
I reserved my heaviness and more foil work up top. Let me show you what I used. So one of my favorite things is a YS Park teasing comb, and I used it to actually come in and do my technique through the side. Because Elisa has very fine hair and low density in the front, I needed to have weight. So I didn't take all of my color to the very front. So I left her some of the weight and, remain, and that remained dark. If I had taken all of this hair light, it would look too bright and look thin. So I came in and took about to this starting area, pinned that back, and with my YS Park teasing comb, I came in and created a section and then just kind of flecked it up and pushed it in. The more I do that, the darker the hair. So I left some of the first areas more pushed and as I went back, less pushed. And it doesn't disrupt the hair by using the comb. It actually makes it to where it comes um, back, but then when I need it to come forward again when I'm done and I'm shampooing, it comes out super, super easy. So I'm just gonna show you I did that technique and then came in with foil work and painted V's and W's going back through these sections. So again, if you're just joining us, we're here with Victoria Thurman Hall. She's showing us the way that she applied the color on Stephen's model. She pre-colored and they've been kind of showing the whole essence of triple craft and working together. So if you have any questions about the formulas or the application, let us know. Victoria can jump in and answer them at any time. Kelly, is there something coming from behind there? Uh, yeah, Mitty was wondering what the color formula was that you used. Awesome question, because for me, I'm glad you asked it, because it's all about the color choice that we use. Now, because Elisa's hair was so delicate, I decided to go with color that's gonna help me in the long run. So I used our lightener, Magma, and I used Magma Stroke 36 primarily, with a little bit of stroke 6.5 and a little bit of stroke 7.3. So it's a gold violet primarily, but a little bit of copper and then a little bit of a pinky tone. So that sat the foundation because my inspiration was actually the nail polish that we picked, and that is Aurora Berialis from OPI. What I wanted was kind of a berry feel to her hair, and that's where I started with my foil work and my balayage in a foil doing it to where I would have the, this foundation to be able to put an overlay on to make it more berry. Thank you for asking that question. And Victoria, maybe, uh, would you mind later maybe writing the formulas in? Or maybe we can take a picture. I know you have them on the screen. We can take a picture and we'll put them in the feed. Absolutely. So you don't have to do all that typing again. Absolutely. In this area here, I did your traditional foil. So this um, wedge shape, um, moon shape that came through, Remember, I needed to stay away from the back of the head because of the amount of layering that he was going to do. I did not want to come all the way back. So I did traditional foils using the magma formulation. I'll make sure you guys see. And then once that was done, we shampooed, went through and did the magma seal. And that was on for five minutes. And then I dried the hair and then went through with Color Fresh Create. Now with Color Fresh Create, it's a semi-permanent hair color perfect for her texture and it gives lots and lots of shine which would show up really well for you guys watching the video and um, we'll make sure that you have the formula but I use nudist pink, hyper coral and um, a little bit of pure violet to get the, the, the look that you see today. So let's head back over to Steven, I think he's got more cutting. So guys, Victoria was just talking about all this beautiful color that she created. So that was the technique, that was the formula. If you're just joining us, Mr. Stephen Moody is over here doing this transformation on his beautiful model. She had super long hair, it was colored, and now Stephen's taking care of uh, putting in a beautiful shape. So again, any questions for cut or color, we'd love to hear them. There was a question uh, that Kelly pointed out, I don't remember who that was from, Kelly, about, uh, it was from uh, Annika Erg, Stephen, when you're layering, how do you how do you avoid kind of a staggering effect on the front of the hairline uh, when you're layering? So how do you, I guess, keep that corner solid around the front? Um, I think the answer to that question, Gerard, um, I think it's kind of over directing the hair away from the edges. Mm -hmm. It's kind of pulling the layers up 
and away from the actual length that you want. And then I guess also creating more of a triangular cutting line. A triangular yeah. shape. Not yeah. rounding it through Not or even squaring it through. It through. Too much. Yeah. Yeah. What was, uh, we have a question for Victoria. What was the base of the color uh, before you foiled? What was her? Well, I think it's about time we should show the image. Yeah, yeah we've got some of this yeah. pre-work pre here on a PowerPoint. So taking a look at what Elisa looked like beforehand, she had a medium brown, so a level four, and underneath this had tons and tons of work, and all of this area was really broken. And when I look at, from the standpoint of Elisa's hair, all of this length, although colored and feeling natural, it wasn't actually natural at all. So um, underneath this, she had been blonde, super blonde. And that's why I did my strand test. So super hollowed out hair that you had to really kind of work on a lot. Yeah. Kelly, if you want to get, ooh, look at that. Here, does on. it, yeah. she does a little turn there. So maybe we could get a turn. Then we'll see the turn of where you're at right now. Yeah. Big transformation happening here. Isn't that amazing? So let's show you that video of her strand test so that you can see how important it is to do a strand test. Steven, let's hope it plays. There you go. Wow, spaghetti for sure. <laughs> so what, what exactly was the strand test? Yeah, so let me give you my strand test. I use this every time that I'm gonna go later. And my strata test is the same, because it's like blood work, right? I want to be able to know what I'm Jeez. doing. <laughs> and it was a one-to-one -one ratio using Londor multi blonde powder, 10 volume for just 10 minutes, and that's what happened to her hair. Good questions, though. So the way to resolve that is make sure you're getting a good haircut. Well, yeah. it's funny because Stephen always talks about um, what's the, my best tool, and the first thing out of my mouth is a pair of scissors. Yeah. I need good quality hair to do good hair color, and if I don't have good hair, there's no sense in even starting to do a cut. Absolutely. Thank you, Victoria. You're welcome. Okay, Thank coming you. back into the money shot here, it looks like you're working on the second side of the fringe. Yeah. Walk us through this technique. Lots of people have just joined us. Yeah. Hi, everybody. So this is my lovely model, Elisa. And um, we can see there's the before of Elisa, her hair's very different, and um, a little bit fatigued. And uh, what we're doing here is quite a layered shag type of look that um, has got quite a short interior. I think Gerard used, coined the phrase Chelsea kind of haircut. So I'm not sure I coined that one, Stephen. I think it's been around for a while, but I'll take the For credit. today. I'll take the credit. For today, take I coined it. it. Yeah. Take it. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm cutting a really sort of European heavy sort of fringe through here that many of you have seen me do before. And um, if anything, it's quite square in shape, which I like because it kind of pops her cheekbones when you do that. It's quite commercial looking. And um, I think another great reason to do these kinds of fringes is it drives people back to salons. It needs maintenance, doesn't it? So in two, three weeks, it's yeah. in her eyes, it's bugging her, she comes back to the salon, and now we're talking... Um, yeah, when we talk about business, the more times we can get a client, you know, over the years, especially the past five years or so, the average appointment time has been really stretching out, reflecting fashion, which has been distressed and grown out color. So it's a great point that you bring up there, Stephen, even, you know, giving someone, even a more traditional bang, someone with long hair and layers that maybe only comes in twice a year, if they have some kind of a bang or fringe, Maybe they'll come in four times a year because they know it needs to be done. 